Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is David Bianco. Getting over a little bit of grogginess in my throat, but I'm getting better. So today's Sunday and the mailman, as in FedEx, showed up today with the Beatles. And this is the double set. I've got the blue in here now, the red one I'll show you in a minute. This is the colored vinyl version that I bought online. And so I pulled it out. So let's take a look. Um, one thing I can tell you that's a little bit disturbing, in my opinion, of course, is this is a 3LP set now, and they put the first LP in the first opening, and they shoved the other two in the second. So it's a little bit tight in here, so I'm really not liking that aspect of the design right out of the box, literally. The other thing is these are stiffer sleeves that the inner sleeves that have the lyrics on them but they could be a little scratchy to the record so i immediately put it in uh, the beautiful red here i put into a mobile fidelity inner sleeve to protect it so uh buyer beware there's a little bit of tightness in this um uh, in terms of the way it's put together because there isn't really three independent slots for the record. Uh, so that was the first uh, obvious thing that I noticed on it. Now the other day I had done an overview based on listening online to the digital set, which I'm sure is more or less sequenced exactly like the CDs are. And uh, in listening to this, I was going to get ready to do some comparisons of the vinyl to what I heard before. And I immediately started to notice after the first few tracks that the sequencing didn't match. And I kind of went, whoa, that something here doesn't make sense. And so I'm going to share with you that because at the end of the day, what we have here in the vinyl is a sequencing that is not anywhere near the sequence of releases. Uh, and it's really peculiar what they have going on, actually, when you look at it. And I compared it to the CD that was released now, the two CDs. And I also went and compared it to the original release of uh, these sets back in the 70s, which was very much in the sequence that the songs were recorded slash released. Uh, and this particular a schedule of songs or sequence of songs on the Red Album specifically kind of takes your head into a whiplash effect because you start going down a road and then up, oh, you're back into the earlier 60s. And I'm showing you the comparisons here that we have to show you the sequence difference. Things like I Want to Hold Your Hand being on side one and then the flip side of that i saw her standing there being then on side five which is like totally out of sequence uh and i'm not really sure what the reasoning for this was i'm sure it has nothing to do with the timing of the songs and how long they are and fitting them on a side there's no issue there whatsoever Plenty of dead wax here in terms of uh, them not putting a ton of songs on one side. And uh, I don't really get it. Maybe there's an explanation. But to me, it's illogical uh, listening to it. It really takes away from the flow, in my opinion, especially as a Beatles fan. Um, one of the things I really liked about the box set uh, from Liverpool, the uh, one that was kind of looked like a crate, is that one was strictly an exact sequence of the way they were recorded and the sequence of recording, which really gave a nice path to their music. This thing is all over the place. Now, the Blue Album, the 67 to 70, it maintains the right integrity of sequence. It's much aligned to the way the older version was done in the CD. So I'm not sure what happened on the Red Album. But clearly, something did. And, and uh, I decided to wait a bit to do a more of an in-depth analysis of the comparison. And in some ways, the comparison's a little bit off track. And here's why I say that. 
typically we are comparing one pressing to another of the same material. Here we have remixes. And I have kept away from doing comparisons to remixes. Like in Jethro Tull, I never really made comparisons to the Stephen Wilson remixes on those. Because to me, that's a bit of apples and oranges. And here it's apples and oranges as well in many cases. Now, I can speak to what sounds different, what might sound a bit better in terms of the mix, but it has nothing really to do with the pressing whatsoever. One thing I do want to mention here is that when I looked at these immediately, I always kind of look at the dead wax, and yeah, these are half-speed masters. Um, that hasn't been spoken about a lot. I think it's noted in Discogs, but uh, it isn't on the exterior sticker, and it hasn't been something in my mind that I recall it being heavily promoted. So that is another difference here that these are, in fact, half speed master. So I can't really explain why this difference exists. It's a bit unsettling to me, uh, just as a purist a bit and really liking to listen to things more in sequence or in alignment with when the albums were released. But this thing really did, in fact, kind of throw me off a bit. And I wanted to make mention of it because it is something that was surprising to me. Uh, I hadn't looked in detail at that aspect of things to compare it. Uh, the other thing I noted was uh, now and then on 67 to 70 is the first track of the last side. It's not the last track of the last side. So it, it begins that side of the record, um, which is great for less intergroove distortion, of course, but I just kind of wondered why uh, that was done that way. And I also wonder why the other two songs that had been redone in the late 90s were left off, being Real Love and Free as a Bird just seemed like that would be a whole package uh, to provide as well as the new Now and Then song. But they are not here, which was uh, something I had originally thought was going to happen, but I guess a lot of rumors were going around and things weren't solidified in terms of uh, what was really fact and what was really fiction. So I'll be doing some more listening as the days go on this week. I'm in the middle of also changing out cartridges this week, a little bit of delay there. So I'll be providing some more feedback on my impressions of these remixes, but probably not as much as it relates to direct comparisons of the originals, because I really don't think that holds weight because of the remixes that are here. So if you've received yours, I hope you're uh, enjoying them. I certainly um, have been enjoying some of the remixes that I've heard. Uh, again, the I Am A Walrus remix on the 67 to 70 is very different. Um, a few people I've read like it. Some people don't. I'm a more on the side of what happened. I, I really don't uh, find it to be uh, enjoyable holistically. There are aspects of it early on in the song that are okay, and then it's kind of goes from bad to worse, in my opinion. And it, it just makes me scratch my head a bit. And when that starts to happen, you, you know, you kind of lose the enthusiasm for the cut because you really want it to be something where you can say, wow, that, yeah, that was decidedly better, and I like what they did with it. Uh, whereas uh, being partially liking it and then all of a sudden having this... Uh, middle of the song change that really kind of takes it out of a uh, expected sound to something that really is difficult to fathom, uh, really begins to take away from the very type of increased value or increased enhanced sound that you would hope to get from these technologies and these efforts. So we can never get these balanced all the way we want them with everything where we want them. Uh, that's for sure. But as it relates to the earlier stuff, uh, clearly they had a mission to get these things out of these pan stereo, hard right, left type of orientations. And, and certainly they did that uh, with the technology that they had. Now, whether that was pleasing to you or you felt it was as good as it could be or was what you expected, uh, 
it, it's all subjective at this point. But certainly they did achieve that end of improving that. And I think that uh, for that aspect of it, it does have merit. But on the whole, listening to all of it, that's where we really have to make the decision at the end of the day. Does the package really bring as much to the table as we need? Certainly, the blue does not have as many new mixes as the red, and the ones that they do aren't great. So the red has more uh, poignancy, in my opinion, uh, to what is there in terms of change. And I think that that was something that, at least me, I was looking for in the effort that they made. And in fact, it is where I was looking for it because I really like a lot of their earlier stuff as well. And some of the digs on it have been the recordings, of course. Now we can look at it and say, how does it sound in a better sound envelope compared to the past? So as always, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please consider clicking on the bell below and selecting all. A thumbs up or like is always appreciated for the algorithm and comments are always welcome. Have you listened to it? What do you think? Love to hear from you. So for now, that's all I have. I'll catch you soon next time on our next Safe and Sound Texas audio excursion. Take care, everybody.